Okay, um, Joanna and I are both located in Seattle and we both work with an elder in Eugene. And that elder is a Virginia Beavert, a, a native speaker of Sahapton, raised in the Toppenish, Washington area. She moved to Eugene in 2007 to uh, work with the Sahapton language program there and also earn a uh, doctorate in linguistics in 2011. And uh, her dissertation published in 2017. This is Virginia and I with, Virgi Joanna and I with Virginia receiving the Ken Hale Prize in Chicago in 2008. Now my projects with Virginia are two, they involve uh, working with uh, preparing texts from archival audio, mostly of her late mother, Ellen Saluskin. We have a little audio though of her uh, stepfather, Alex Saluskin and her aunt, Musi. And as can be imagined, new words come up in the texts that are not in the 2009 published dictionary. And so we're also trying to prepare an update of that dictionary. And our methods for working on the text involve various steps. One of the steps is what I call lexical check, where uh, I identify the words that are in the text that are not in the dictionary, but should be, and words in particular that would benefit from a sentence illustration. I prepare a list of these words and I give them to Virginia to write example sentences, to construct example sentences, which she likes to do on her own time thinking about it and then writing freehand. And on the next slide, you can see a snippet of one of these uh, writings. Um, this is example number 37 from a list of about 40 words on that batch. Uh, the word wa'an, which means literally hit say, uh, to hint negatively about or cast aspersions on. And as you can see, Virginia wrote about uh, three sentences to illustrate this word. And she doesn't write in English and then translate. She, in fact, leaves it to me to come up with a translation, which I always check with her. And that's another part of our back and forth is uh, I provisionally translate and, and get her to check it. And I, we thank the Endangered Language Fund for supporting her work on uh, on the lexicon. And then, uh, and during the summer, uh, well, you know, the things shut down in March of this year, and during the summer, things opened up a bit, and we've been able to resume some in-person visits. Uh, we're unfortunately not able to stay six feet apart when we look at papers together, but we're trying to uh, take as many health precautions as we can. And I'll turn it over to Joanna at this point. Thank you. And I'll talk about two other projects involving Virginia. Uh, one, the reprint of a legend book, and the second, working with UO Sahapton language students on documentation and materials creation. So the legend book is a, was, is a project to reprint and expand a book of legends that were originally published in 1974. Virginia collected the legends from elders at that time, translated them, and presented them in English. We can't go back to the original recordings for that book, but it was important in the reprint to include some Sahaftan language. So the new edition will have bilingual legends and updated glossary annotations. With the legends at the point the COVID restrictions came into place, we'd gone through kind of a first transcription and check free translation, done one print and review, but the legends weren't ready for a written presentation to a general audience or a student audience. And so at that point we needed to, to shift and to see what we could do not in person. Through Zoom and through Google Docs, we were able to do a fair amount of finalizing the legends with the assistance of the third co-editor, Michelle Jacob. Um, we worked on the phone on Zoom, as I said, on Google Docs to kind of clean up these final questions. This spring as well, uh, students in the second year of the language class at UO were working on their projects. And the whole course is built around students documenting some kind of home domain. Um, they work with Virginia to gather the language 
Reagan Anderson and Virginia Beaver are the instructors of the class and I support the class. At this point in their learning, students are beginning to come up with, with questions and topics that Reagan and I don't know the answers to, uh, whether students wanna know about feeding birds or traditional food or traditional arts. Um, it's, it's built around Virginia being available to the students. The whole term was remote. Virginia at that point then had student materials on paper. We met via Zoom and we refined our work via Google Docs. So going back to uh, my projects with Virginia, uh, there's both advantages and disadvantages. The, the disadvantages to our work through the mail is that uh, there's a, a time lapse in being able to follow up with questions. Things come up and we have to save them for some other time. Some of the work has to be done in person, like playing little bits of audio from a text, listening to that again. It's hard to do that over the phone or over Zoom. Um, and it's uh, also, I found that uh, not being able to come in person kind of means that there's no immediate deadline for the work getting done. So sometimes it drags on for a while. Um, and then we also uh, have been making uh, recordings to accompany the dictionary and those have had to be postponed until we get together in person. And we've had hardware as well as software issues that are hard to resolve without a tech person on the other end or someone who can navigate that. Um, we've had to have a helper to help Virginia get connected. Audio quality on Zoom and of course sometimes even on the phone isn't good enough to hear the distinctions that we need to hear to, to get words correct. Um, and especially with the legend book, that in-person face-to-face confirmation of, yep, this is ready, we're done with this. I've very much felt the lack of that. However, there are some advantages um, with, our, with our project. Uh, we've always exchanged uh, papers. Um, this, this is a, a process that Virginia is very comfortable with, um, using paper and pencil to write things down. And, uh, and so we've uh, been able to continue the project, which is way better than having to put a stop to it with the shutdown. And so we've been able to make some progress on it uh, during during the, the three months or four months of shutdown. And, and that's good. And we found that there were some things that, that worked better. We could do some real-time editing on the Google Docs. So it kind of saved another printout step. Um, some meetings can fit with Virginia's schedule or her energy levels better. Certainly less travel time up and down I-5 for, for Sharon and I. And of course it is the, has been at times the safest or only option for our colleague. Thank you. Thank you guys.